In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a camera in Lightburn for precise engraving alignment. I do have a product tie-in, so if you want to skip ahead to 2.30 to see the camera setup, go ahead. Adam Stack sent me one of their Maker AC1 cameras to test out. See the description for a link and some product info. Here's what comes in the box. You get a pretty solid set of instructions in several different languages. These cards with all the dots and the brown ones are used to set up and align the camera in Lightburn. This armature attaches to a clamp and is used to position the camera above your laser engraver surface. As a note, this camera will work with any laser engraver because it connects directly into the computer. A measuring tape is included to help position the camera, though I think if you have a regular tape measure that's metal, it'll work better. Still, it's nice they included that in case you don't have one. Here's the camera itself. It's pretty small and connects into the computer via USB. Lastly, there's a very large clamp for mounting the camera to either a table or to the laser itself. Assembling the armature in the camera is very easy. Two clamps control the in and out, up and down, and angle of the arm. When tightened, the clamps hold their respective pieces very securely and nothing slides around. The camera mount features a ball and socket type clamp and it screws onto the horizontal arm. The male side features a jam nut, so when you put the camera mount on, you can position it exactly how you like it and then tighten it down. The camera mount itself also features a jam nut. These were small details I appreciated because it made getting the camera lined up just right pretty easy. Don't forget to remove the protective film off the lens. The clamp can go around something that's a maximum of about 100 millimeters or 4 inches. This is pretty cool if you're attaching it to, say, a worktop made out of 2x4s. But any tabletop would do. Then the camera arm itself just slides into the hole. Now realistically, because the camera needs to be calibrated to the machine and kept in one position, it's probably a lot smarter to just add it to the back rail like this. This is my third laser engraver and all of them have slid around on tables pretty easily, so I recommend doing this. These steps should work for any type of USB camera. Adam Stack included these cards that you're supposed to use to help align the camera directly over the center of your engraving area, but I found a better way. Camera positioning is really important for accurate calibration and alignment. To find the exact center of my engraving area, I ran a string from each corner to make an X. My engraving machine has graduated marks on each axis, so this made it pretty easy to line the strings up properly. It only took about a minute to find the exact dead center of my machine. The Atom Stack AC1 needs to be about 400 to 440 millimeters above the cutting surface. I split the difference and cut a dowel to 420 millimeters. The dowel was inserted into a hole that I drilled through a piece of scrap wood. I used a drill press to make sure the hole was perfectly vertical. And that was how I made a height alignment jig. I set the jig at the exact center of my engraving area. Then I carefully adjusted the camera until it was sitting directly on top of the dowel. Once I was happy with the alignment, I removed the jig and the strings. At this point I was ready to connect the camera and power everything up. The Atom Stack AC1 is plug and play, so Windows will install whatever drivers it needs to use it. I opened up Lightburn on my computer. I'm going to be showing how to do this on the PC version, though I imagine setting this up on a Mac is pretty similar. Once Lightburn opens, you're going to use laser tools and calibrate camera lens. Then you'll select your camera. For whatever reason, this one shows up as PH720. You'll set it to standard lens if that's what you've got and do the full calibration. Then click Next. The next several steps are going to include using the calibration card to line up the camera. Adam Stack included one of these with the machine, but if you don't have one, you can download one through Lightburn and print it out. You just follow the positioning pictures and set the card in the same spot on your screen. Also remember to deselect Honeycomb Check Enabled. If you don't, it's very hard for the software to pick up the dots. What you hope for is a pattern score of less than 1.0. If you don't get that, you reposition the card and you keep trying till you do. With the camera set up the way I had it, I found that I got a good score almost every time on the first try. Anyway, you go through this about 9 times with the card in different positions on your engraving area. 
Now, I tried out this calibration method a few times before filming it, and I learned a few things. The height of the camera above the cutting area is pretty important. Now, because this camera was made to do this, and Adam Stack included the correct height in the instructions, I knew what to set it at. Had I made a camera myself out of a webcam or something, it probably would have taken a little bit of experimentation to get it dialed in properly. I also found the lower the score you got when running the pattern check, the better the final calibration would turn out. What you'll find out in the later steps if you don't do this right is where you think your engraving is going to go is going to be way off. So if I got a score that was higher than 0.5 in any of the areas, I would reposition the circle pattern until I could get something lower. Sometimes only a very small minute adjustment was what it took. This entire process took about 15 minutes start to finish. Of course, that was after I went through the procedure a few times, but the very first time I tested this out, I think maybe within an hour I had the camera dialed in pretty well. What I mean to say is, this isn't very difficult. I ran into one small hiccup on my last circle pattern capture. Because the cardstock that the circle pattern was printed on had some sort of coating that made it slightly reflective, the position of my lights caused it to be hard to see. Subsequently, I got a pattern not found. I used a thin piece of MDF I had handy to make kind of a shade for the card. This helped the camera contrast enough to be able to see the dots better. Once you complete the final camera calibration step, Lightburn will take you automatically to align the camera. At this point, you're going to need something small to engrave. It's going to need to be at least 200 by 200 millimeters. You set the speed and power settings to whatever is appropriate for your material in your machine. Then you put whatever it is you're going to use for the camera alignment onto your engraving machine. I used the setup block that was included with my machine to set the laser to the proper height. Then I ran a quick frame check. Satisfied that the frame was alright, I started the engraving. What's happening here is Lightburn is creating a visual pattern that you're going to use in the next step to align the camera. Once the pattern has been engraved, you definitely don't want to move it around on the engraving surface. Next, you'll capture the alignment image. If the laser head is in the way of any of the alignment points, you'll have to use the buttons above to move it so you can capture a clean image. Once you have a clean image, click Next. At this point, you can move the image around with your mouse and zoom in to get to the exact centers of each pattern point. You'll double click in the center of each one to set the corners. Remember, you have to go in order 1 through 4. Once this step is done, you've finished camera calibration and alignment. I thought I would test it out to see how good the accuracy turned out to be. I made a small mark on a piece of wood and I set it in the center of my engraving area. Then in Lightburn, I opened up the camera control panel and clicked Update Overlay. I could see the image of the wood with a little mark on my screen. I drew a small circle around the mark so I could test the alignment. I figured if the laser went exactly around this tiny little cross the way I expected it to, it meant that the laser was pretty well aligned to the camera. The circle was exactly where I expected it to be. I proceeded to test the accuracy in regions a little bit further from the center of the engraving area. What I found as I tested was that my calibration ended up being very good. I had high ranges of accuracy in all regions on the engraving area, though I do think the most accurate area is directly underneath the camera. I proceeded with another type of test. I set up a text pattern in Lightburn to be engraved onto a piece of black anodized aluminum. I wanted to see how close I could get the pattern to the edge and still have it properly centered. As it turns out, I was able to get the engraving position just about perfectly. Though I will admit, it looks like there's some calibration issues I need to figure out on my laser that have nothing to do with the camera. There is another thing that you can do with this camera that might benefit you if you're into making videos like this. First, set the camera to None in the Camera Control menu. Then find the Camera app in Windows. This allows you to view or record from the camera directly above the laser. I'm not sure what this would be useful for other than obtaining other kinds of camera angles for a Maker video, but it's kind of nice to know it's there. For a final test, I decided to see what the accuracy would be like on multiple objects that were all placed somewhat askew. I think if I was really doing a lot of these, I would want to use a substrate to pre-engrave so I knew exactly where to set the card, but this was an interesting way to test it out. 
My results were pretty good, but I think they would have been better had I spent more time trying to line up the image in Lightburn. Admittedly, this is the only camera I've ever set up for Lightburn, but I was very happy with the performance. My only real complaint would be that the $119.99 price tag seems a little steep. There are many web cameras that are available in the sub $30 range that would probably work just fine for this application. However, for two reasons, I think I'd rather go with the AC1 over one of those random web cameras. I could make an arm like this out of some scraps, but I don't think that the adjustability would be nearly as good as it is on the AC1. Secondly, without knowing the exact focal length of the camera and how high it needed to be positioned above the engraving area, getting a random camera calibrated would be very tricky. Not undoable, but tricky. Still, if you had an extra web camera handy and you wanted to give it a go, I think it could be done. It would just take a lot of testing to get it all dialed in. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.